Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sino America's uh, introduction to OEM Sensors micro webinar. Today, we have our general manager, Sean Lafferty, and our national accounts manager, Chester Dilday, presenting. And we have some technical staff as well. Our product manager, Thurston Selby, will be with us to answer any questions, as well as Andrea Lochner. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat window or the questions window, and we will answer any questions you have today. Thank you. John. All right. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, okay. Today's topic is a little bit different than some of the other micro webinars that we've that we've been hosting lately. Uh, this one's really targeted more at the OEM market. Um, you know, as we roll out the DCS and we start penetrating in the digital segment, you know, we're moving up from the standalone controls world to the digital world. And uh, where we're looking to go from here now is also to be able to do fixture integrated solutions. So for those of you who are reps on this call, you know, give some thought to some of the manufacturers in your portfolio and where it might make sense for us to, you know, foster a relationship and, and put together a, a good solution. And for the manufacturers on this call, this is really meant to be an introduction for you to Steinel. Um, you know, we haven't really been focused on the OEM market for the last couple of years. So uh, you'll see a few things that we currently have available uh, that are, you know, uh, in the U.S. market today. You'll also see some things uh, that we're uh, launching uh, in other markets. And, and we're going to be collecting some ideas about where you think we need to take our, our uh, portfolio forward from here. So a little brief background on the company. You know, we are... Uh, branded as the inventor's company. You can see our, our new logo up there on the upper right corner with the two circles, uh, the small circle turning into a larger circle. And that represents uh, going from idea to product or solution uh, or acorn to oak tree uh, as the analogy. And so this is really an acorn discussion today. We're really talking about the beginning uh, of Steinel America's OEM uh, solution uh, so, you know, when, when you think about Steinel, and as you see some of the slides that Chess can walk you through, uh, you know, we, we try to think outside the box. We are always looking at, at products out in the marketplace uh, and trying to find better ways to make them just a little bit better. Um, and that's where we, we develop, you know, what we like to think of as value add features uh, that don't really call extra. And I think you'll see some, some uh, things here today that are a little different. Um, and, you know, that's what uh, comes to what we'd like to say is a smarter solution, right? So uh, we're always looking to innovate, lots of little things. Second thing uh, you, you should know about us is the quality of our products. Uh, we manufacture everything in Europe. Uh, we make our own plastics uh, in Leipzig. We do our own circuit boards in Switzerland, and we do final assemblies in uh, Romania and Moldova. So we, we, we are always... Um, focused on making sure that everything we manufacture is of the highest quality. Uh, we test everything before the box. We test it on equipment that we design and develop to ensure that it performs exactly to the level of the cut sheets. Um, so it does what it says it's going to do, which in our industry is uh, unfortunately not as common as it should be. But we take great pride in making sure that our products are of the highest quality. And we know that when product arrives uh, to, to the customer, that it's working and it does what it says it's supposed to do. Um, lastly, uh, you know, the easy to install on commission, you know, that's something that we'd love to work uh, more closely with you guys and you can uh, decide for yourselves. But we, we always are looking for little innovations just to make things just a little bit easier to use. And as far as commissioning, we've got some really nice options you'll see in a minute. Um, finally, it's outstanding service and value. You know, we are here for you at every step of the way. Those, uh, those folks on the, on the call who maybe have done business with us in the past, will know. Um, you know. We are very diligent about uh, providing technical support in the early stages of solution development. We're uh, focused on uh, superior service. When an order comes in, we get it shipped out right away. We maintain uh, sufficient levels of stock in Bloomington. Our world-class supply chain is constantly uh, replenishing. And uh, of course, on the back end, uh, technical support uh, and service at commissioning. So we are here at every step of the way and uh, we take great pride in being easy to do business with. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to Chester who's gonna walk you through some products. But before I do, just a quick shout out to Travis Labe. Uh, we really appreciate all this help in, in helping us uh, get this material together and, and really get our thoughts together around this, this segment. So with that, Chester, why don't you take it away here? Hi, Sean, thank you so much for that introduction. And to begin with, I would just like to uh, 
extend a uh, uh, very uh, thankfulness for all of our vets that are currently uh, serving in the uh, armed forces and those that have served in the past. Uh, it is Veterans Day and really appreciate everybody's uh, uh, service uh, to that point and also uh, uh, echo uh, Sean's uh, input on Travis. Uh, been a lot of help. So uh, what we'd like to do um, uh, at this point is just kind of take you through uh, uh, what Steinl is doing here in uh, the Americas uh, today. Our, our main current business model is really a standalone uh, analog-based uh, sensor technology that uh, is really designed to uh, keep people in code compliance for new construction and, and major rebuilds. So um, everybody's probably very familiar with the uh, standard type of sensors, power packs. Uh, we have a lot of uh, unique differentiations in our coverage patterns. Uh, uh, our number of detection points that we have, uh, like the uh, sensor down in the very bottom corner, uh, that one actually has 4,800 individual detection zones compared to a lot of the competitors uh, less than 100. So a lot of uh, really uh, major advantages uh, in that marketplace, but uh, as we're seeing, as codes continue to evolve and get more stringent, uh, things um, uh, that the analog uh, world was able to accomplish uh, uh, really just aren't uh, uh, economically feasible uh, in this day and age. So what we've done is we've recently released a new product, our, and that is our digital platform uh, called our DCS. And this platform uh, allows for three individual uh, zone controls, uh, including uh, individual uh, dimming in all three zones, uh, Lots of uh, long features and everything. Don't have uh, uh, 30 minutes to uh, go over that in this micro webinar, but uh, uh, this system is all uh, based on a two wire uh, communication bus. So each of the sensors and wall switches and everything actually tie back to the controller uh, on that bus. Uh, it's non polarity, uh, so it's super easy to install, uh, all programmable through a smartphone app. So uh, we really uh, uh, ventured uh, out of the analog into the digital world with the, the release of our DCS. Where we're at now is looking at uh, uh, the next potential uh, marketplace here in the U.S. Uh, that we've identified, and that would be working uh, with uh, the OEMs to integrate uh, Steinle sensors into fixtures. Uh, you know, uh, we could have a, a long debate on uh, the advantages and disadvantages of having a uh, sensor in every single fixture, uh, you know, with the DLC requirements, uh, all the incentives that uh, are available in certain parts of the country. There's a lot of uh, pros and cons of, uh, on all sides. But uh, as we understand today, uh, there's a lot of uh, fixture integration that is going on. And we do have some current products that uh, are available. Uh, not only here, but over in uh, Europe, and we are developing more. And our main goal of our presentation and, uh, today is to get some feedback from uh, the, the U.S. marketplace on what is really needed uh, in regards to a sensor uh, in a fixture. And what you see uh, on the screen right now is, is kind of what we've identified as the three major uh, types of sensor technologies that are out there uh, that are integrated today. Uh, and also, these can be actually subdivided into one more, uh, which is indoor and outdoor. So in looking at uh, this particular chart, uh, uh, you will see that we've identified uh, one category of standalone. And that can come in, uh, you know, PR or microwave are the two major uh, components that we see here in the U.S. today. Uh, standalone applications obviously aren't wireless, so uh, we've identified a lot of the uh, the main categories that uh, uh, we see that are in each of the three main areas. Uh, the biggest difference between standalone and smart is basically the ability to do dimming and uh, be able to actually program that sensor without actually accessing it in the feature, whether it's through a handheld remote or some type of app on the phone, uh, just a, a way of being able to program that without actually uh, 
touching the physical sensor are, are the main uh, differences we see between standalone and smart. And the next step, and what we see now is the majority of, uh, of the mainstream sensors that are being integrated into especially interior fixtures are, are, the, are the smart variety. So they can do a, a zero to 10 volt dimming. Uh, they can be programmed with a handheld once they're put in and they have a lot of the, the basic functionalities uh, uh, that are needed. Uh, standalone, uh, we see those, um, you know, in a lot of like stairwell applications, uh, uh, kind of the one-offs, uh, uh, not the uh, the main uh, part of any projects, but still, uh, there are areas that uh, uh, have fixtures that uh, basically just need on-off control, or potentially uh, uh, high-low and off control, and uh, not being able to uh, uh, communicate with those or provide dimming. Uh, in that matter. So uh, there is still uh, a segment of those being used today. Uh, and a lot of that is also with high bays uh, applications that we see, uh, you know, that basic standalone application uh, uh, still uh, being utilized here in the U.S. Uh, where we see uh, the future is in the networked uh, slash wireless, uh, you know, the uh, Internet of Things uh, type of approach. And that's uh, actually moving from the smart over to a you know a wireless type of sensor uh, that can communicate uh, via a, uh, a mesh type of network. Uh, uh, Bluetooth seems to be the predominant one uh, that's gaining uh, more and more traction, uh, of, especially with the ease of being able to integrate smartphones and other applications with that, uh, and all the advanced uh, features uh, that go along with that particular uh, technology. So. Uh, one of the items that we were looking at doing as part of this micro webinar is um, uh, once it's completed, uh, we will uh, be sending out a, uh, uh, a note uh, with a link to a survey that uh, would really love to uh, get uh, as many people's feedback as possible on uh, what type of sensor uh, is needed today uh, in the marketplace. Uh, there'll be uh, selections for the, the different variables there. And uh, what do you see is going to be needed uh, and down the road uh, here in the future? So uh, we'll get that out uh, and uh, really appreciate uh, everybody taking the, the time to uh, complete that and send it back so we can make sure that, uh, as Sean mentioned earlier, that we are actually uh, designing uh, the sensors that uh, are most uh, usable here in uh, the U.S. marketplace. All right, first question. They say you can program with a phone app. Do you need special hardware needed on the KNX line to talk to the devices? Okay, uh, uh, I think I can handle this. Uh, Steinle does have a lot of technology, uh, especially over in Europe, uh, that is KNX based. Uh, that is a communication uh, protocol uh, that is utilized. Um, as far as fixture integrated sensors, uh, uh, we're not uh, uh, looking at integrating a KNX at this point in time uh, uh, that I am aware of. Uh, a lot of the, uh, like the digital platform sensors and others that we have, uh, Stonel has those uh, in KNX uh, and everything. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, needing a special uh, hardware, uh, I am not aware of that. Uh, uh, Thurston or Andrea, could you uh, comment on that? Yeah, with regard to the, uh, the, the fixture integrated controls, at least here in the U.S., currently we're not uh, approaching the KNX version of this. Uh, and yes, there are additional controls that can be integrated in with some of the KNX products, uh, but that's not our focus uh, today with regard to the fixture integrated system. Today, uh, we actually do have a, a small portfolio of products here in the U.S. Uh, that are available for OEM uh, uh, usage. Uh, and to start with, uh, would be our high bay uh, sensors. Uh, again, these are definitely uh, uh, in the standalone category. Uh, uh, they are not smart. Uh, they are definitely not IoT. Uh, but um, a couple of items that um, uh, customers have really appreciated with the Steinle uh, high bay sensors, besides the you know the extra switching zones that they have, uh, you know 1416 
uh, versus, you know, typically uh, in a starburst pattern for some of our competitors is less than 100. Uh, these, you can't sneak up on them very easily at all. Uh, and uh, we publish mounting uh, heights all the way up to 45 feet. Uh, I've had customers that have uh, actually gone a little above that uh, without any problems at all. Uh, and they come in two uh, uh, configurations, one being a aisle sensor uh, that you can actually uh, get aisle weight coverage up to 100 feet, uh, and also a 360 version that uh, allows a 60-foot uh, coverage pattern uh, for the 360-degree uh, 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 sensor that we have. So these are uh, line voltage. Uh, they, we do have those uh, uh, for our Canadian friends that uh, might be on the line. Uh, we do have those in 480 votes, A. Eh? So uh, we uh, can't help uh, north of the border there. And we also have that uh, these uh, in a IP65 uh, location rated uh, configuration also if that is needed. So uh, Seeing quite a bit of uh, interest still in, uh, in these in the, in the U.S., uh, you know, especially for, uh, you know, warehouse uh, applications where, you know, dimming is not needed and uh, truly just on off control is what is required uh, by code and by spec. Uh, it, it's, it's an awesome sensor for that. The other uh, item that uh, we provide besides the actual hardware is uh, if a customer needs assistance in determining uh, how many, where, coverage patterns. Uh, we also uh, can assist with doing layouts. Uh, here's just an example of uh, what a corridor uh, layout would look like with uh, uh, the 200 series aisle sensors. Uh, and we do have some accessories uh, like our end cap uh, that actually can go off to the sensor to, to make sure that the uh, uh, the uh, sensor is not picking up uh, forklifts and other movements that are outside the aisle uh, and will only turn on when uh, something is actually inside that area uh, that's seated. So that is a, another service besides the hardware that uh, uh, Sonos is uh, happy to provide. The other OEM sensor that we have here in the U.S. today is our microwave sensor. Uh, it's called our HF Lim 2. Uh, we see uh, uh, quite a few uh, orders every month for these. Uh, uh, nothing real uh, fancy about this sensor. Again, uh, line voltage, uh, on-off uh, uh, type of control. Uh, has good reach uh, being microwave. Uh, a lot of people have used these in stairwell applications and other uh, where there might be uh, uh, barriers that uh, uh, prevent a PRR from uh, seeing. Uh, movement to uh, activate the light. So uh, these are available and uh, UL listed uh, today. Uh, very small. Uh, and the nice thing about the microwave, it can fit under the lens. Uh, so you won't even, can't even see it outside of the actual fixture, uh, which uh, your architects love not having to be able to see sensors uh, uh, in particular buildings and everything. So we, uh, we do have those available today, uh, uh, and they're all UL listed. Now, what we have over in Europe uh, is some similar technology, but it's a little more advanced. These are more uh, towards the smart category uh, versus the standalone. Uh, we do have uh, uh, these microwave sensors that you see here, our AMB series line, and they are programmable via a handheld remote which uh, is one of the categories uh, that makes it smart. And with the dolly version, uh, using a dolly driver and everything, then you also have the ability to do uh, uh, the dimming uh, capability uh, with that particular sensor. So the uh, uh, COM1 version uh, uh, doesn't have that because uh, uh, it doesn't actually have zero to 10 volt uh, purple and gray wires coming out of it uh, today. Uh, but the Dolly version does allow for uh, that uh, dimming control uh, to happen. And we have two types of remotes uh, for that, the uh, program remote uh, for the Dolly version, and there's a user remote uh, that can sit at the person's desk, uh, teacher's desk, or anything like that, that would allow for you know, on-off dimming uh, to occur uh, with the, the Dolly sensors. So, so these are available today. Uh, 
the ones without the dome on it are really designed for like water faucets and everything where uh, very close proximity uh, is needed to uh, detect uh, motion. And the ones with the domes are for the uh, larger reaches, which are used in, in fixtures uh, over in Europe. So uh, like I said, these are available today. They're CE listed, but they're not UL listed. But if there was an interest or a need, uh, this is something that we potentially could uh, bring to the U.S. Uh, fairly quickly uh, uh, in the capacities that uh, uh, they're in today. We just need to submit them to UL for approval. Where our, our team over in Europe is going is more towards the uh, networked uh, uh, wireless uh, solution, uh, the IoT versions, and that is with our uh, net variety of sensors that we'll be launching early in uh, 2021. Uh, these will include everything from a uh, high bay version, uh, which uh, will be in the same type of configuration that uh, we spoke about earlier, a 360 degree, and also an aisle version. Uh, we will also have a PIR. Uh, this uh, sensor is extremely small, uh, about two inches long is all uh, is. Uh, uh, but being PRR, obviously the lens would have to be exposed so it could detect motion and everything. But uh, uh, but extremely small. Uh, and we'll also have a microwave sensor, uh, similar to what we have today, but it will also be uh, a wireless uh, uh, a BLE mesh type. And uh, since the Steinle sensors have uh, quite a bit more coverage area than a lot of our competitors, uh, we're going to actually have a net module that uh, would allow uh, for some creative uh, laying out where you could actually only put sensors in uh, a certain number of fixtures and you could put the satellite net in the others and still be able to control those uh, without incurring the extra cost of uh, the full sensor. So that is uh, where we're looking at uh, uh, moving to, uh, similar to how we progress from the analog to the digital world uh, with our standard control package, uh, we're looking to do the same thing with our fixture integrated uh, sensor package uh, and everything with uh, with that particular lineup. So that is what is being uh, developed and is uh, uh, close to being released uh, uh, over in, in Europe right now. And Chester, we have a question. What is the okay, distance okay. for the mesh? The distance should be not more than 20, 20 meters. And that would be from sensor to sensor, correct? Yeah, um, between a, bl a Bluetooth model to a Bluetooth model, it should be not more than 20 meters. Correct. And uh, this is a Bluetooth mesh uh, configuration also, uh, uh, similar to Zigbee and uh, other mesh technologies. So if for some reason a sensor was to uh, fall out of the mesh for whatever reason, uh, somebody hits it with a bat uh, or who knows what, uh, then the mesh would uh, heal itself and uh, basically find the next uh, Bluetooth uh, device to be able to communicate with. So to conclude, uh, uh, just wanted to uh, again emphasize that uh, uh, we're taking a very uh, strong and serious look and have uh, uh, done quite a bit of research and um, uh, making a determination that uh, this is a, a very promising marketplace that uh, Steinle feels that uh, uh, we could help uh, the U.S. marketplace in. Uh, but again, uh, we want to make sure that uh, what we uh, do bring over and, uh, and or design uh, for the U.S. marketplace is uh, exactly what's needed. Uh, we know there's a lot of options out there. Uh, you know, there's a, a, always positive and negatives about everything. But uh, uh, we see this as a great opportunity to bring uh, uh, some smart technology and some uh, IoT technology uh, uh, over from our uh, European uh, counterparts uh, uh, to the U.S. to uh, to help us out here and uh, make it much easier to comply with codes and uh, uh, and really one of the big things that we see is uh, the complexity of site installations continues to get. Uh, of uh, more and more complex uh, each and every day, uh, especially as the codes get more uh, stringent and everything. Uh, going out, 
uh, doing commissioning. Uh, you know, the dream would be able to do it remotely. We wouldn't have to be on site, but uh, uh, for those that have been in the field, we all know how that works. Uh, uh, there's always uh, uh, items that come up. So our one of our main goals uh, is to make this as simple as possible, and having uh, sensors in fixtures uh, really can uh, uh, make the installation much less complicated uh, over the long run and potentially save uh, save money. So uh, looking forward to uh, uh, getting that information out to, uh, to everybody. Uh, looking forward to your feedback and uh, helping us uh, to really uh, pinpoint uh, exactly what uh, type of sensor, what technology is needed uh, so uh, we can actually uh, design that. Uh, uh, that way it can go into, uh, as you can see in the, the charts here, uh, whatever fixture that you might have that needs uh, that type of technology. Uh, we use your light uh, uh, with the Stylo sensor and now we've got a, a very intelligent uh, type of fixture that um, uh, meets all the code compliance and uh, makes it easier for the end users. So that's kind of our goal. And I know that uh, we're getting close. Uh, our uh, goal for our micro webinars is to always keep these at 30 minutes or less. I uh, just wanted to say thank you again for everybody uh, uh, that's attending. Uh, uh, Jennifer will get uh, this and the other information out. Um, my contact information is on the screen right now. If anybody has any other questions or would like to reach out to me, uh, please don't hesitate. Uh, and I'll be happy to help out. All right. Thanks, Chester. Yeah. So once again, as Chester said, thanks everybody for your time. Uh, you know, we're, we're always available for for a follow up if you'd like a deeper dive on what we're doing or a, a longer discussion. If you want to provide feedback, ask more questions. Uh, just feel free to reach out to Chester or any of the contact information here for for Steinle America. Uh, you know, as Chester said, this is a, a really exciting new opportunity for us to go beyond the standalone and the digital network controls and now uh, tie it all together with a uh, with a fixture integrated solution so we're really looking forward to bringing this out to the market and uh, appreciate everybody's input support and uh, time and attention today thanks everyone stay safe